Okay, so welcome to Engineering Hydrology. This is the first lecture and the objective basically of this lecture is to introduce you to the importance of water uh, resources and water in general uh, to your careers as civil engineers. Here I will not concentrate on the importance of water to us as human beings because we all know how much we rely on water. Uh, in fact, I will only be looking at the relevance of water to you uh, as civil engineers. You will hopefully see how fundamental water is for you in your profession and how much uh, you need to know about water so that you will have a promising career in civil engineering. Why am I doing this? Well, uh, I've been asked by several students, why do we have this much water courses in our careers? And uh, why is there uh, a water course in a civil engineering curriculum? We are civil engineers. We need to design structures, design buildings, design bridges, design canals. Why do we need to learn more about water? Uh, so hopefully this lecture will give you an understanding of the uh, importance of water in your careers as civil engineers. Uh, I thought that a good start would be to go to the very basics, to the definition of uh, civil engineering. So what is civil engineering? Uh, one of the uh, many uh, definitions that you would see is uh, the definition from Wikipedia. So reading it, you'll see that civil engineering is a professional engineering discipline that deals with the design, construction, and maintenance of the physical and naturally built environment, including works like roads, bridges, canals, dams, and buildings. Well, one simple argument is that there is a water component to each and every one of those uh, structures. You need to design culverts for bridges, you need to know something about water uh, when you're dealing with bridges, uh, canals and dams are obvious water-related structures, and a building without a water network cannot function. But it doesn't end there. Uh, here, we need to look at why do we have this definition uh, in to civil engineering. It, the objective is basically is the advancement of our civilization and the improvement of our lives. Uh, to do that, we need to look for sustainable solutions and we need to ensure that whatever infrastructure we build to our, to our civil society can sustain uh, all our needs, all our civil needs for the future. So remember, civilization is related to civil and this is where the word civil engineering came from. Uh, so, the second definition that comes to mind is what is hydrology? Because we want to see how much those two definitions are relevant. Uh, you might be surprised that up to the uh, 60s and during the 60s, there was not a, uh, a, an agreed upon definition of hydrology. Why? Not because hydrology is a narrow discipline, but in fact because it was uh, diverse enough that no single definition could uh, hold it. Uh, only until recently, uh, the, the, the hydrology as a discipline began to have a well-rounded definition, and one of the good definitions that uh, you would see in classic hydrology books uh, is the following. So hydrology deals with the cycling of water in the natural environment. Why do we say natural environment? Well, one of the reasons is to distinguish it from a, uh, a cousin discipline, which is hydraulics, uh, where hydraulics deals with uh, the cycling of water in man-made structures. So uh, hydrology basically relates specifically to two things. First, the continental water processes, with continental meaning uh, all the water processes that take place um, on the land part of Earth, uh, be it physical and chemical processes at all scales. Uh, and secondly, the global water balance, 
uh, with all its spatial and temporal variabilities uh, and transfers between all the compartments of the water. What compartments I'm talking about? Well, uh, hopefully this water cycle would show you how many uh, forms of water we deal with. So, uh, from precipitation to water vapor to snow to groundwater and surface water to water in the ocean, dew and many other ones. There are several uh, components and processes that uh, govern or shape the water cycle, which we are going to revisit in the next few lectures with more detail. Uh, in here and for this lecture, all what you need is to know it and see it, and then we will go into further details as we go on. So, uh, I can see that some of you might get lost here. So, I've defined civil engineering and I've defi defined hydrology. And some of you might say, well, are they really connected? Uh, so I thought of showing you the uh, example below, and hopefully from this you will be convinced. Uh, so what you see here is the map of Egypt, right? And you can see that uh, there is desert almost everywhere except along that thin line, uh, which... I think you've already figured out that this is the Nile River. So then what? We can definitely know that we need water for agriculture, and this is why it's green, right? Uh, what would you say when you see here? You can also see that uh, all civilization or all the uh, people living in Egypt actually live along the Nile Basin. Uh, in fact, more than 95% of all Egypt's population live along this line. And you can tell this from seeing the, the satellite image of Egypt uh, during the night time, uh, where you can see almost total darkness in the desert area and uh, too many lights around the, the basin. So I hope this managed to capture your attention and to show you how much water is relevant to you as civil engineers because this is what you are concerned with, right? The civilizations, the sustainability of our uh, civil structures, of our urban structures, of our cities. So if cities are around water, there has to be a very important uh, relationship between water and civil engineering. Okay, so uh, it doesn't end here, right? Water is not always good news. Uh, sometimes too much water or too little water can become a problem. Uh, droughts have managed to displace many people and cause uh, distress and fatalities through famines and uh, other relevant disasters uh, across the world. And at the same time, too much water causes flooding, uh, like the photo you see below. Uh, these are some examples of uh, a flood that took place in uh, Pakistan, where you see displaced villagers trying to move, carrying the most precious that they own with their bare hands and just leaving to, to an upper land where there is less water. These are some further captures from the same flood that took place in Pakistan. And this is how the city looked like uh, on July 30th, 2010. Uh, we are not only concerned with floods, tsunamis is another set, is another uh, problem that water can cause. And here you can see the devastation and the power of water uh, in uh, a place in Japan following the latest big earthquake that hit Japan in 2012. Another capture of the same. Uh, and hurricanes as well can cause a lot of destruction. Probably you've all heard about Katrina, the hurricane that uh, hit the 
uh, parts of the U.S., uh, southern part of the U.S. Uh, these are the photos of, of that shows the magnitude of the destruction that water can cause to civil engineering structures. So, uh, let's switch gears here and see how much water we have. Uh, let's see whether we have a problem when it comes to the amount of water available. Uh, who can estimate how much water we have? Well, it turns out that we have, we have pretty, pretty much water. Uh, about 1.4 billion cubic kilometers of water. How much is that? Well, how much is a cubic kilometer? How many cubic meters are there in a cubic kilometer? If you multiply 1,000 meter by 1,000 meter by 1,000 meter, you get 1 billion, that's with a B, uh, cubic meters of water per cubic kilometer, meaning 1 billion tons of water, or 10 to the 12 liters, since we have 1,000 liter per cubic meter. So this is, this is a lot of water, right? Uh, what is it that we've always learned? Well, we learned that we need about 150 to 200 liters per capita per day. So let's see how much water, given this piece of information that we really need. And let's see whether we have a problem in, in water quantities. So if we assume that we have 10 billion people on Earth, I know we have less, but uh, this number is growing. So. Just for you, for the simplicity of calculation, if you multiply 10 billion by, say, 200 liters of water per capita per day, how much water do we need? Well, if you do the math, uh, you will see that well, all what you need is probably 2 to 5 cubic kilometer of water max. Uh, well, if you look at the table above, it looks like we're in a good shape, right? Uh, unfortunately, the answer is no, not really. And uh, to convince you with this, we will next slide. So, even though we have more than one billion cubic kilometer of water, what's the problem? The problem is that 96.5% of this water is water in the oceans, uh, meaning that this water is saline water. Uh, so, we basically end up with only 2.5% of the water we have on Earth as fresh water. But still, 2.5% of 1.4 billion is a lot, right? Again, not really, because 68.6% uh, .6 of this 2.5% are of fresh water are glaciers and ice caps. Water that is uh, very far away and water that you need to heat and transport so that you can make use of. Another 30% of this 2.5% fresh water is groundwater, which you need to dig deep wells and extract, which keeps us only with 1.3% of the 2.5% fresh water. This 1.3% is what we have in terms of uh, surface and other uh, fresh waters. Uh, some of this water is ice and snow, and we're talking here about 73.1%. Uh, the other 20% is lakes, and only 0.46% of the 1.3% of the 2.5% is uh, water in the rivers. So, uh, you can see from here that we don't have much water and given our expanding number in terms of population and given that our needs are growing and uh, our losses are increasing as we go from rural to urban lives and as our uh, lifestyle is changing the amount of water that we have on earth is barely sufficient uh, to, to give us our current needs. So we have a sustainability problem at the stake and we 
really need to work as civil engineers to make sure that we have enough water that would sustain our, our civilization in the next years to come. So, uh, I based my calculation on this 150 to 200 liters per capita per day, but is this really enough? Uh, well, this is what I learned when I was a student, uh, that when we are designing a building, this is the amount of water that we'd need. But does this take into account our food, uh, our, the water that we require to satisfy our nutritious needs? The answer is probably no. We need this water to wash our clothes, to bath, and to do our domestic needs, but it does not account for water, so uh, for food, I mean. So how much water do we need for our food needs? Probably the same amount, double this amount or more. And if more, more by how much? Well, it turns out that it's much more. Who can think about how much water do we need for a sandwich? or for a cup of coffee. Think about it and the answer would not be what you expected. Uh, this, is, this is here a, a document from the FAO uh, organization and it shows you how much water we need for each item that you see. Uh, looks like we need about 100 liters of water to produce one cup of coffee. We need 13 liters to get one piece of tomato, uh, 40 liters to get only one slice of bread, and 7,000 liters to get one uh, pound of beef steak. You, you may wonder why we have this huge amount for beef. Well, you need to plant green to, to get the cows or the livestock to, to grow, you need to give them water to drink and you need water also for their food. If you add this up over the lifetime of the livestock, you will see that you will end up needing a lot of water. So a single hamburger sandwich is 2,400 liters of water. This is 2.4 cubic meters of water and this is only one sandwich apparently we cannot even carry the amount of water we need every day if we want to account for uh, the water we need for our food and finally how much water do we need for our energy consumption I will end this lecture at this point and we will we are going to go through our water needs for energy in the lecture. Uh, before I end, I wanted to acknowledge the sources where I got the photos and the figures during this presentation. And uh, thank you. Have a great day.